Welcome to Magnifica TV News Program, dedicated to providing news of the Church. Today is December 21st, 2022, and these are our news. The Pope is 86 years old, and this week received the gift of reconciliation with Russia, following the Pope's criticism of that country. The Bishop of Matagalpa in Nicaragua has been formally accused of terrorist activities by the Sandinista dictatorship. Cardinal Wallet has denounced those who accuse him of sexual misconduct towards a woman 30 years ago when he was Archbishop of Quebec. The writer George Welker said that what is happening in Germany is not a schism but a collective apostasy on the part of Catholics. The Chaldean Patriarch of the Assyrian Church criticized the German Synod because he goes against the common faith shared by all Christian churches. In the week of Pope's 86th year birthday, Russians have given him the gift of reconciliation following the Pope's criticism of the war in Ukraine. Pope Francis turned 86 years old on December the 17th. That makes him the fourth longest serving pontiff in the last two centuries. In March next year, it will be 10 years of his pontificate. Conceding with his birthday, Russia has sought to put to rest the tension created by statements made by the pontiff in which he accused some of the ethnic groups fighting in Ukraine of brutality. According to Moscow, Russian diplomacy has reportedly received an apology from the Vatican for the Pope's statements about Chechens and Buryats. These statements were published in the U.S. Jesuit magazine America. Received through diplomatic channels, a message from the Vatican containing an official statement on behalf of the Secretary of the State of the Holy See, Pietro Parolin, regarding the above-mentioned statements on the pontiff, it reads as follows. The Vatican Secretary of State presents its apology to the Russian side. The communication from the Secretary of State also says that the Holy See deeply respects all the peoples of Russia, their dignity, faith, and culture, as well as other countries and peoples of the world. The Vatican Press Office confirmed diplomatic contacts in this regard, although they did not acknowledge having apologized. The Sandinist dictatorship has formally accused the Bishop of Matawa of involvement in terrorist activities. The bishop has been detained for four months. The Nicaraguan Prosecutor's Office has admitted the accusation presented by the Public Ministry of the Government of Nicaraguan Dictator Ortega against the Bishop of Matagalpa in Nicaragua, Monsignor Rolando Alvarez. Monsignor Alvarez has been charged with the crimes of conspiracy undermining national integrity and spreading false news through information and communication technologies to the detriment of the Nicaraguan state and society. Monsignor Alvarez was arrested on 19 August in the early hours of the morning when officials forcibly entered the bishop's house of Matagalpa. They also arrested priests, deacons, seminarians, and a layman who accompanied the prelate during the time he was confined in the bishop's house without being able to leave. One of the first to speak out was the auxiliary bishop of Managua, Monsignor Baez, who from his exile in Miami described what the regime is doing against Alvarez as a crime. Rolando, you are not alone. We are with you. We pray for you and we demand your freedom. With you is God, who does not abandon his prophets, he said. Cardinal Wallet has decided to go on the attack 
and has denounced those who accused him of sexual misconduct 30 years ago. Cardinal Mark Wellett, prefect of the Dicastery for Bishops, has filed a defamation suit after being named as one of those accused of sexual abuse in a class action lawsuit filed against the Diocese of Quebec in Canada. Having preliminary ensured to protect the anonymity of the plaintiff by obtaining an order to that effect, I am today taking legal action for defamation in the Quebec courts in order to prove the falsity of the allegations made against me and to restore my reputation and honor, well, it says. I have never been guilty of any reprehensible behavior, let alone those alike against other members of the clergy name in the collective action. This inappropriate association, intentionally constructed and widely publicized for improper purposes, must be denounced, he adds. It is clear that victims of sexual abuse are entitled to fair compensation from the harm they have suffered. I am sensitive to their suffering and reiterate my sincere condolences. My position does not question their right to justice. It is painfully necessary to defend the truth, my reputation, and my honor. The Cardinal, who is seeking damages of 100,000 Canadian dollars, has promised that any financial compensation he receives will go towards the fight against sexual abuse suffered by Canada's indigenous communities. For writer George Wagner, what is happening in Germany with its Senate is not a schism, but an exercise in mass apostasy. Theologian and writer George Wagner predicts that October 2023 will be a turning point in the history of the Church and will profoundly mark the legacy of Pope Francis as unfailingly what is happening in Germany will pour into the first sessions of the Synod of Synodality. For Weigel, what is happening is an instrumentalization of sexual abuse in order to reinvent Catholicism, an unconditional surrender to gender ideology, and an ecclesiological revolution that, in the name of empowering lay Catholics, strips the offices of bishops and priests of their full sacramental character. Also, in his opinion, the German Synodal Way is not a development of the Second Vatican Council, but rather a rejection, because it rejects outright the Council's teaching on divine revelation. He concludes by saying that it is often said that German Catholicism is in a state of schism. That is an inadequate description of the German crisis. German Catholicism, as expressed in the documents of the Synodal Way, is in a state of apostasy. Even the Assyrian Chaldeans are alarmed by the development of the German Synod. This was expressed by the Patriarch of the Assyrian Church. The exercise of synodality can never serve to depart from the apostolic tradition from the faith handed down to us by the Apostles and which unites the Catholic Church with the ancient churches of the East. We share the same Depositum Fidei received from the Apostles. It has been declared by Mar Awa III, Patriarch of Assyrian Church of the East. The Church ceased to be in full communion with Rome after the Ecumenical Council of Ephesus in 431. When asked to comment on the Synod, the prelate said that the true synodality is best suited to manifesting consensus around the Depositum Fidei, Deposit of Faith, and to guarding it together. Its synodal dynamics spread the journey of the whole Church in the footsteps of the Apostles in faith. They cannot be used to drive a wedge between members of the Church on matters of faith or morals. Rather, the exercise of synodality serves to maintain the unity of different sensibilities, the Patriarch said. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting on Cardinal Ouellette's decision to denounce those who accused him of having abused a woman 30 years ago. This week, 
a piece of news or code that I am sure has gone unnoticed by the vast majority, but which I believe has its importance. To understand it, you have to tell the story. A few months ago, if I remember correctly in August, Cardinal Wallet, who is still the prefect, the president of the Dicastri for Bishops, one of the most important of the Vatican Curia, was anonymously accused that 30 years ago he had put his hand on the lower back and hugged a woman in a public act. An accusation that was made as part of a series of accusations against the Diocese of Quebec, of which Wallet was then Archbishop. An accusation that had no more foundation than a rumor, because 30 years had passed. The accuser did not know who she was. At least those who filed the complaint did not say who she was. She had been a pastoral collaborator in the diocese in the past, and according to her, in one or in some public acts, the former archbishop was kind to her, and that, she says, made her feel upset. Nor does the accusation say how intense the hawks were, or up to what lumbar vertebrate the archbishop's hand reached. Simply, a lady says that 30 years ago in a public act, nothing private, nothing in a room, nothing in a sacristy, in a public act in front of everybody, the archbishop was affectionate with her. He gave her a hug. I imagine that as so many hugs are given in so many places, and that made her feel annoyed, it bothered her. And 30 years later, within a package of accusations against different priests whose crimes the vast majority occurred 60 years ago, 30 years later, it is said that Cardinal disturbed a lady in this way. Well, at the crime, Cardinal Wallet denied, of course, that this had happened. And he also said that he was prepared to defend himself if the accusation came to court, which it has not yet since happened. It was enough. It was enough for Cardinal Wallet to have a shadow over his past from that moment on. The importance of this is understood to the extent that one understands who Cardinal Wallet is. Not only is he the prefect of the dicastery for bishops, but in the last two conclaves, Wallet was the third man, and this is very important. In the conclave in which Benedict was elected, the second man was the then Cardinal Bergoglio, today Pope Francis. In the conclave in which Pope Francis was elected, the second man was Cardinal Scola, now retired and in delicate health conditions. In both conclaves, the third man was precisely Wallet. Wallet is a person with a reputation of being a moderate conservative. He has worked in Colombia as a priest, has therefore very good relations with Latin America speaks Spanish perfectly, is appreciated in many African countries. His work in front of bishops has put him in contact with all the bishops of the world, and of course, he has many supporters in the United States and in his country, Canada. Well, it was, unto this, I dare to say, ridiculous denunciation on the runway for the next conclave. I do not mean at all, and I insist that I think it is important to clarify this, that this next conclave will be held immediately, in no way whatsoever. Pope Francis, who will be 86 years old on Saturday, is in pretty good health for his age. In pretty good health, even his knee problems seem to be subsiding, and in fact, a trip has been announced for January to places as complicated as the Congo or South Sudan. But I have no doubt, I am sure, 
that some of the heirs of the Saint Gallen Mafia are already moving. They are already preparing everything. The hand that rocks the cradle of the next Pope is already at work. Was this ridiculous accusation part of a plan to eliminate Wallet from the race for the papacy? Well, I do not know, but he was certainly out immediately. Who could vote for a man who was rumored to have molested a lady with an effusive embrace, even if it had happened in public and 30 years ago? He was immediately out of the running. Well, this week's news, because those were the old news, this week's news is that Wallet has stepped forward and decided to denounce those who denounced him. The institution that spread the rumor that someone was upset with him. For the record, in August, when the news came out, I told some influential friends, I told them, Wallet is making a mistake. It is not enough to say I am innocent. And if they denounce me, I will defend myself. It is not enough because they do not seek to put him in jail as they did with Cardinal Pell. These are completely different cases. They simply seek to spread a rumor and separate him, remove him from the list of popes, as in fact had happened. Instead, now with his decision to go on the attack, to say I want to defend my honor and I denounce the one who denounced me, I will file a lawsuit. I demand compensation to wash my honor. He has asked for 100,000 Canadian dollars and has said that if he wins the trial, he would donate it to this commission that has been created in favor of the indigenous people of Canada. I do not know if there will be a trial or not. First, we do not know if there will be a trial against him. Second, we do not know if there will be a trial against those who defamed him. According to the Cardinal, those who slandered him and harmed him and damaged his honor. We do not know what is going to happen. But it seems to me at least that at this moment, Wallet has done what he should have done. And he is back in the race with his gesture he has made. He is back in the race even if this is not the objective. I am convinced that it is not the objective for which he has filed this complaint against those who denounced him. His honor is restored simply by this fact. This man is innocent. He is willing to prove it. He is willing to prove it by denouncing, going against those who have defamed him. Moreover, not only I believe that he is back on the starting track and very well placed, but it is better than before because now he can present himself as what he is, a victim of the terrible campaign of defamation that the Catholic Church is suffering where things are used that unfortunately have happened. And there have been many, even a lot, even if the percentage has been small with respect to the number of priests, but where there are also many innocent people who are being accused and perhaps the accusations are being manipulated as in this case, to remove a person from that possible list of candidates to succeed Pope Francis when the time comes, which may still be quite some time from now. Has something similar happened with Karina Tangley? What has happened in Caritas International has not been. Karina Tangley has insisted several times. It has not been a purification of the management team due to sexual abuse not even due to economic mismanagement. It is due to a generic mismanagement. But really someone is going to vote for Tangley, who was a strong candidate to be Pope. Someone is going to vote for Tangley when there is an accusation of mismanagement, even if it has been for sexual issues. Not even money. A generic thing of mismanagement against him in something as important as Caritas International. Is this one more move of those successors of St. Gallen who are preparing the way so that at the right time with rumors like Wallets or with facts like Tackles, those who could be candidates are disqualified 
and only one or two appear as possible persons. Cardinals who can be elected Pope? Well, I do not know, but certainly what has happened has seemed significant to me, and I congratulate Cardinal Wellet for the step he has taken. We must defend ourselves. It is not enough to say I am innocent, and if they accuse me, I will defend myself. No, you have to take the step and say I have been accused and I am innocent. I will defend myself before those who have accused me, and I will become the accuser of those who have accused me. This is an anecdote of what has happened this week that seems relevant to me. But really the most important thing is that we are already close to Christmas. We are only a few days away and this has to help us to remember that Jesus Christ is the Lord of history. These manipulations of men, including those of the church, not only those of politicians, these maneuvers of men are in the end only mere diversions because the Lord is a specialist in writing straight with crooked lines. Christ, who was born in the cave of Bethlehem, is the Lord of history. He is the master of our life. Divine providence exists, not because we understand its plans, but because we are sure that it exists, and because certainly many times we have seen how this writing straight with crooked lines take place. Christ is the Lord of history, and in Him is our hope. Until next week, God willing. We will continue to keep you informed about what is happening in the church. We will be back, if God's willing, next January. We wish you a holy and happy Christmas.